Pamela, did you end up in on the wrong room or the uh, wrong I part of the room? In, in, uh, for some reason, I think it's because I tried to log in too early. But um, anyway, so yeah, if you would promote me, that would be great. Sure. Okay, that should work. There you are. Greetings. Can you? We can hear you. Hi, Pamela. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, <laughs> Philip. I was about to say we're expecting Philip too, and there he appears. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Hello. Um, Happy so, you're back. Yes. <laughs> um, so from our end, it sounds as if Lisette might be running late. Um, Everald may or may not make it. So our plan was to just kind of maybe get the brief updates and table our planning agenda for September because our members aren't going to be here. Um, and that way, hopefully we can get out of here by 730. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing is, though, um, well, I guess we can do it during member reports or whatever, because we're already recording, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's start, and then we'll we'll do the member reports. Go from there. All right. Um, so this is the CSSJC meeting. It is August 14th at 6.32 and we are opening. I um, need to find the agenda. And okay, here we are. Um, so pursuant to chapter 20 of Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance will be permitted, but efforts will be made to ensure the public can adequately access proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so we can review the agenda. Um, we will have call to order announcements, member reports, public comment. Um, we are going to table number four and five and six um because i think those were the annual goals and committee updates um and then go to number seven which is crest dei updates um rob and youth empowerment and then upcoming agenda items public comment any other topics we didn't reasonably anticipate and adjourning um so, sorry, there's a small child making sounds. Um, uh oh, no, <laughs> hold on one second. Sorry, it's popsicle time. <laughs> um, so, does anybody have any announcements? I see Pamela has her hand up. Oh, you're muted. I'm not sure that you can call the meeting to order without having a quorum. So I think what we figured out previously was we can meet, but we just wouldn't be able to vote on anything. Yeah, that's what we've done uh, previously. Because remember, there was a time that we didn't have a quorum because we didn't have enough committee members. So, um, you know, what Jennifer Moyson had told us is that we can meet, but we just can't take a vote. We can't make any decisions. Because we don't okay. have mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we've done in the past. Um, any announcements? Um, I'm not seeing any as of right now. Any member reports? Yeah, I guess um, I just want to talk about the fact that we don't have, um, I guess Isabella has uh, resigned and um, we already had two vacancies. So now that means we have three vacancies. 
Um, so right now we're actively um, working with, with the town to recruit new members. So anyone who's out there listening or anyone who's out there and wants to recruit other members, please do. Um, we're going to be doing, we were trying to do interviews um, during August, but because August is a big vacation month, um, it didn't really come, come about. So it's going to be happening early September. Um, so obviously we want to make sure to um, recruit new members so that we have quorum so that we can vote and make decisions. Um, as well, we're looking, one of the um, uh, members is appointed for, for a young person for, and so we want to make sure to also recruit young people. Um, so anyone who has those types of networks, uh, please also put it out to um, young people to, to uh, apply to be a, a part of CSSJC. Um, let me see what else. Um, the other thing is just a kind of like other report is just around the public comment. I want to clarify. I know that there was something stated on the agenda, but I want to clarify again that it was the whole snafu last time, but we've kind of clarified things with with, with Camille that um, basically, you know, um, we suggest three minutes, but it's not three minutes. It's at the discretion of the chairs. And so we can go beyond three minutes. And so I want to make that clear. And that has been clarified to our staff liaison. And so uh, moving forward, um, the public comment will be based on um, at the discretion of, of myself and Allegra in terms of the time um, and, and how long people can speak. So, you know, we've kind of talked that through and there won't be those types of things to, to occur because I know that that was very uh, disturbing uh, last time. And we want to make sure that people feel comfortable speaking at our public comments because we have been silenced. I know we, CSSJC members, have been silenced at other town meetings. And so we do not want people to be silenced at our meeting. Our meeting is a safe place, place for people to come and talk about um, safety, social justice, equity, inclusion, diversity. This is the place for it. And for you to have that ability to do so without um, being shut down for it. So wanna make sure that people understand that. Um, that that has been addressed. Uh, and let me see what else. Do, 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 do. I think that's it for now. I don't have any anything to report. Um, so I suppose we can move on to public comment. So if you can use your raise the hand feature, um, during public comment, we will recognize members of the public. When called on, identify yourself by stating your name, preferred pronouns, and residential address if you're comfortable. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of chairs based upon number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede time to another's, and we will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Yeah, and I want to clarify that in terms of the address. If you don't feel comfortable, do not share your address because I do know that, you know, a lot of people, like for instance, for me, when I speak in the town, I do not share my address because I feel that I could be targeted because of it. So do not feel like you have to do that. That's obviously a message that we share, but you don't have to do that. I think I clicked on Brianna instead of Pat, who had her hand up. I don't know if Brianna wants to share or um, if I should move to Miss Pat. Hi, Allegra. I'll make a comment after I'm driving right now, but I do have something to say. I'll join in on the next public comment. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Brianna. Hi, Allegra, I think you should let um Brianna make a public comment, if you don't mind. Oh, I think she's driving, so she said she would. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for your time. Um, I just want to welcome Philip back. I'm so excited. Thank you for taking on, you know, the new role. I'm very excited. And um, let's see, Deborah. Thank you for clarifying public comment. 
protocol because I just want to remind folks that when we created CSSJC, recommended it to town council, we wanted to make it a safe place for marginalized residents of our community. And that includes that people can speak and not be rushed or restricted or um, uh, dismissed with whatever they had to say. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, I do want to say that I'm excited about DEI now that we have Philip. I say this because DEI department supposed to be addressing issue of equity in our town. And across the state, most cities and towns use their upper funds to uplift marginalized uh, businesses and residents. That's not the case in Amherst. I will hope, you know, you fill up, you know, being on board, I'm not trying to put you on the spot that uh, you should know that um, my group, Black Business Association of Amherst Area, um, decide to members who were not, who were startup before they joined my group, they got some funding because of their, you know, connections with the landlords in town. But the existing Black business owners of my group, none of them received a dime from upper funds. And we still have money left. That upper funds is supposed to be used to help people who were negatively impacted by COVID and it did not happen here. And we still have money. I just want to put that out as you guys look at equity. And also not, not only BBAA is also BIPOC led organization, women who are very vocal or, crit or critic of our town government also were denied funding. MS Media, and I MS uh, Community Connections. I also want to touch on what I hear from the community on a regular basis. In fact, I have some people listening in, in my living room and people are hurting. Inflation is high. There was some money set aside for upper funds, for housing, people are not able to access that funds for what they consider their need. We have people with high medical bills, with vehicle to repair, with um, you know, food insecurity. There are other bills that people can pay with the upper funds, but our town decided to put so many restrictions on it. And that's why the funds are not being depleted. People are not you know, not able to access it unless if you get eviction for your landlord. Who wants that history follow them for eviction? So DEI, I challenge you, you know, you can do better. I'm excited, uh, Philip. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. I'm not seeing any other hands up and um, we will have an additional public comment period at the end. So I think if we want to move into the updates, we can go ahead and start with the DEI. So as um, I stated in the email to you both this afternoon, there is not very much to update about uh, in the DEI department. Um, the primary uh, update is that Philip has joined the department as of August 8th. So uh, many of you, I think, uh, are probably most of people on the call um, probably know him from his role on this committee, but I wanted to um, hopefully uh, ask him to introduce himself to members of the community who might not have you know, know him. Yeah, so my name is Philip Avila. I've been a town resident um, previously for five, six years. 
took kind of a hiatus off to California and now I'm back after a year. Um, looking forward to the work. Um, I started uh, August 5th, so it is actually my eighth day um, on the job. So learning a lot, moving forward. Um, yeah, just really excited. Well, welcome back, Philip. We're excited to have you um, assisting yeah. the DEI department. Yes. And um and me too. I wanna I wanna say welcome, um, Philip, for being back. You know, obviously, you know, having another community organizer, activist, and someone that cares deeply about um equity, social justice, um, safety. Um, you know, since you were on CSSJC and also on um Human Rights Commission as one, as the chair, um, you know, you're an asset to this community, and so we're excited about it. Um, but as one of the callers, Ms. Pat stated, you know, obviously we are going to um, also challenge, right? Because DEI, you know, this department that you joined was created by the Community Safety uh, Working Group. Um, uh, and and one of the functions was to really push the town, right? Push the town to be more equitable, to be more about um, safety, social justice issues, diversity, inclusion. And so we want to make sure that that happens. And so that's why, you know, we want to, you know, make sure, and that's why I want to clarify, and I want to hear from Pamela because for the past two months, or maybe two or three months since Jennifer Moisten left, there's been a lot of changes. And you know, I I think Pamela, maybe you were busy or something, but you know, there's been some reports that have been sent in, but really, um, you know, someone from DEI hasn't been able to come to our meetings, and I think it's crucial that someone from DEI attend the meeting. I mean, you all you all don't have to stay the whole time, but at least to come, give us some updates, give us an opportunity to you know, ask some questions, things like that, dialogue, so that we know what's going on. Because DEI is a central office. That's why it was created. Central office to really push the town, like push, not just, you know, handhold. And, you know, it's like to push, right? Push the town to be around diversity, equity, inclusion. And also, and, and that was one of the things that I know, Pamela, as you said, there, there was an email that you sent it was in the community safety working group, we also wanted to make sure that DEI was really hand in hand with CSSJC. So, you know, I know that the staff liaison is Camille, but I'm kind of confused and perplexed as to why it's not someone from DEI and why DEI now is not going to be attending or maybe I'm misinterpreting or mis I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So I want to get clarity around that because it should be in tandem, right? DEI and CSSJC should be in tandem in terms of focusing on these issues, because we are charged to focus on these issues and to make sure that the town is focused on these issues, that the town council is focused on these issues, town managers focus on these issues. So DEI should be a partner right along with us. So I guess, welcome, hit the ground running, lots of work to do. And I guess I wanna get some clarity in terms of what's going on, because like I said, since Jennifer Moisten left, because Jennifer was awesome, 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 there's been a lot of kind of confusion and I wanna kind of get a little bit of clarity in terms of what's going on and what's happening moving forward. So I um, stated in the email and I'm happy to repeat for everyone here, when I took the position two years ago, the DEI department was tasked with supporting four different boards um, with a staff of two. So the African Heritage Reparation Assembly, um, H uh, Human Rights Commission, this commission and the Disability Access and adv uh, advisory committee. I've been working for the last two years to get some um, actually workload equity because I was the only director with uh, four and department with four uh, boards that they needed to support. So there has been an agreement made with the town manager that this department DEI will support the human rights commission and uh, Philip will be the primary liaison to that commission. I will be the primary liaison for the Disability Access and Advisory Commission. That commission is undergoing some changes um, through the town council, and it's going to be required that it has an elected or an appointed uh, member as a voting member of that board. Um, so that requires additional duties for this department and for me. And uh, so a decision has been made that the staff liaison for this uh, committee will be through the Crest Department. Um, as I also stated in the email, uh, either Philip or I will 
be able to attend the meetings um, based on need and availability. Uh, but we have a lot on our plate, which we're still trying to figure out. Um, I think the other update would be, you know, there's been very little to report on for the last few months, really, since the end, uh, since mid-June, because we've been awaiting the arrival of the assistant director who could engage in planning with me for the responsibilities for the department. So, and as um, I also stated in the email, I anticipate that will be the case for you know, a few months, as Philip just stated, this is day eight for him. He will need to get acclimated, have an understanding of the work. We've already started to think about what our staff workshops would look like, and we need to spend some time thinking about the other operations that we will engage in. And I I think it was best to wait to have someone on board as a partner to have those conversations rather than to simply dictate um, from my perspective alone, what the activities of the department would be. Um, so thank you, Pamela, for that. It, it definitely provides more clarity. And I do understand that. Obviously, I'm um, appreciative and, you know, I do, you know, feel for you all that you only had two people, then you were down to one, um, and, you know, lots of changes happening. Um, and yet, right, the work continues. There's still a lot of things. I have community members coming to me and saying, Deborah, why isn't this, 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 this getting done? You know what I'm saying? So so there's still the pressures, right, in terms of, you know, these issues around, um, you know, safety, social justice, equity, diversity, inclusion happening, right? Because people have been waiting, especially the BIPOC community have been waiting for these things for years, <laughs> So, um, so even though, of course, I appreciate the, the 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 situation, it still is what it is. So that's fine. I mean, obviously, you all have to make your decisions in terms of who's going to be supporting what group. You know, obviously, I think the thing is is that we want to just make sure, though, that and and Camille, I mean, I I try to, you know, meet with you, and you know, me and Allegro try to meet with you to kind of discuss certain things because we want to make sure, though, that things are clear in terms of how, what a staff liaison does, what that means to be kind of the support for CSIJC so that it can be smooth, you know? And so I'm still gonna be asking for a meeting um, and I wanna make sure to include Pamela, include Phil. I don't, we can have the meeting with the town manager, fine with me. We can all meet with Camille, everyone, because I just wanna make sure that we're very clear in terms of how we're gonna pr proceed along. So that's fine. So Camille, you're gonna be supporting us. Now, the 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 point that I want to kind of focus on though is what you said that you are going to be meeting as a need on as needed basis. Again, I want to reassert that I feel it's important that there be a DEI representative attending our meetings on a regular basis, mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. So I, let me interrupt I, you for I, a moment because I think that as I said in the email, um that we intended to, that Philip and I would likely alternate attendance at this meeting. Um, based on needs and, and availability. So I did not say that we wouldn't attend the meetings. I said that we're likely to alternate our attendance at the meeting. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Like I said, you know, that's why I said, maybe I was confused about it, but thank you for clarifying. That means you all are going to be alternating. Awesome. That would be great. Um, and like I said, you don't have to be here the whole time because, you know, I understand that you all have a lot of work to do and so on and so forth. But I, I think it's critical, though, that someone be at these meetings because we always have a lot of questions. Um, Allegra, I don't know if you have anything else to add around that because I have some other questions though about some other updates around DEI. Um, I don't, I think that was helpful to hear, um, made it more clear, so thank you. Great, and so my two questions, one is around um, youth empowerment uh, center and youth empowerment programming. Um, I know that you said obviously there hasn't been a lot going on, but, but, but I guess, in one of the reports that Camille read, um, I don't know if it was last month or the month before or something, it had said that the Youth Empowerment Center is now under the rec. Is that correct? Yes. So, All right, so I will uh, let yeah, Camille answer that. There we go. Yeah. Hi. So um, yes, uh, Youth Empowerment is under rec. And also, um, if you're ready, I can let you know that Philip and I both are on the Youth Empowerment um, I don't know. They haven't named it. 
But right now, just to let you know that the contract is ready and it's waiting for the town manager's signature and that there is a feasibility study in progress being done by the Donahue Institute. And like I said, Philip and I are both on that uh, um, as liaisons. Okay. And so, so what does that mean though, in terms of it's it, it, under the rec now? Because before, like I said, when, when we were doing with our recommendations, the SWG recommendations, it was supposed to be under DEI. Why was it changed to rec? That was some of the questions that I asked that I didn't get an answer last time. As I stated last month that uh, when I spoke to rec, um, and Ray was on to speak about it before, I think, or maybe that's another meeting. Anyhow, um, it that is with the town manager and Phil, do you remember? Who else? Who else I think that was before. Paul or yeah. Uh, I was uh town manager as well as the finance department. And... Thank you, it was finance department. That made a decision to to change it over to rec. Oh, I'm not sure. That is mm -hmm. above my pay grade. So, so, and Pamela, you don't have any information as to why I thought the I thought youth empowerment was under DI. No, I've actually I've been reporting for um, almost a year now that the town manager had made a decision that there would be a task force on youth empowerment, and that so would not be under the auspices of the DEI department. So the town manager made the decision. The task force I met, I bel I don't want to say for the first time, but I think it was the first time that uh, that um, the Crest director and um, the assistant DEI director were included in a meeting. But I don't, I, there may have been meetings prior to that that they weren't a party to. And I, um, I haven't been party to any meetings um, other than the, like the first hour of the meeting that they had earlier this week. Okay, so so let me get this straight. So now there's a task force that has been meeting. Well, I'm I'm using the word task force to describe the group. The group doesn't really have a name. Like we actually went back to look at the uh, email today to see if there was a name for it, but there isn't a name. So it's a group of people that have been to my to the best of my knowledge organized by the town manager and rec. But I, as I said, I was in the meeting for an hour today and or earlier in the week and i i don't have any detail that i can provide um, uh, so you all so so phil and camille you all are part of this task force this group yes yeah. okay so you all are part of this task force and you all met how many times once so once all right so that you all have met once and and so now and this task force is under the rec is under rec right on the recreation um, town rec. No, it's it is in the hands right now of finance. Okay, so finance. So finance is the one that kind of oversees this task force. They're overseeing the group and the money to the Donahue Institute for this report. Okay, and now and they hired a Donahue to do a feasibility study. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, because my question for this is that it is just that, again, CSSJC is the one that's supposed to kind of oversee making sure that youth empowerment center is being established, is being established in an equitable way in terms of social justice. Now it's been removed from DEI totally. It's under this finance group meeting happening. We don't have any details about it. And so how are we supposed to oversee and monitor when now it's on this in this side kind of realm that we don't have a lot of information on. So the only thing I can talk about is how when we met yesterday, this was the first meeting for Philip and I to be part of. Mm -hmm. There was um, people from the town. It was also the school um, educators and other people meeting to decide how we were going to get the information for the the uh, feasibility study. So that was a big thing that was talked about is how to get the youth involved. So one of the things that, um, as you know, the original 
uh, task force or the CSWG, the pay, the report came out in 2021, which mm -hmm. was three years ago, which meant that everything was done four years ago. So those same students that were there then are now probably, you know, four years older, graduated and now. So the difference is, is they're looking at the students that are here now to figure out what the needs are because every couple of years, the needs of students change. So they wanna make sure that they accurately represent the needs of the students now. So the things that they're talking about doing is one of the things was about getting people out and getting information and surveys, et cetera, but also actually talking to the students. And one of the ways of doing that, and um, I didn't realize this, was the amount of young people that are at the block party that is next month. Um, and also first day, which is coming up next, uh, actually next week, I think. But to actually engage in people, and one of the things that was talked about, and we have talked about before, that when I read the CSWG report, that there were very few people that were actually surveyed in that uh, study. So one of the things that's really important to do is to get out there and get more input. And you've alluded to that and getting all the information from these people and to be able to get a more... Uh, robust report in so that moving forward, we're actually doing the work. Mm. Well, I mean, I think I, first I want to clarify that um, there wasn't little survey. If you go over the report, you'll see that actually how uh, people were, how the study was conducted was actually by going in and talking to people and making sure that there was a diversity of people. Because once you just talked about the block party and you talked about the new school, that is concerning to me. Because the block party, the, the majority of the uh, of folks that go there are going to be white students. It's not going to be students of color and BIPOC students. And then the new um, uh, student one also. So so I think you all, they want to do more than that. And for me, the other part too that concerns me about what you just talked about is the fact I, I'm all for getting and, and making sure that young people are sharing information and that we get that information. But it's also a nice del delay tactic for the town, right? The fact that you, what you just said, right? Yes, it was four years ago. Yes, and now we're gonna wait for another four years to get more information for, from these students before the, the, the centers put, put up. So, I mean, in the same regard that I say, Yes, it's wonderful because look at Rob and that's going to be my next question, right? Look at the, the resident oversight board. It was a lot of, oh, we need to survey and we need to get information and so on and so forth. And where is the resident oversight board? Yet and still not put together and not, not in place. And so, so, so now we're back to, let me finish my sentence. Now we're back to the same situation, right? Which is very concerning to me, which is now surveying again young people, now going to places where a, a lot of um, you know young people of color and BIPOC young people aren't at, and then are we getting you know the information that we want to get, and then more delay tactics? Well, Concerned. so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna say to you is so um, as I said, I read the survey from the CSWG, and some of the things that I was looking for in there was how robust the research was. OK, so my feeling is, is that research is important. And I've spoken on this before about how to effectively communicate and how to get there and to be out. And one of the things about getting research done correctly is getting people that look like us out there talking to people. OK, so we are going to get more information from people if you're actually out there doing in the community. So just going in and just saying, okay, here's a piece of paper or whatnot is not necessarily going to get you all the information that you want. Whereas when you're actually out there talking to people, it's a lot better. So the block party, like I said, that can be a start. It doesn't have to be the end all be all. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of places. The other things are some of the residences and also in the schools. So if you're going in the schools to get the information from like, what is it the teachers are seeing that the students need? What is it some of the, um, the counselors are seeing? So we want a robust, fully fleshed out 
survey and to get the information from all of those involved. And yes, I do understand what you're saying that yes, it's four years. Okay. I, I can't speak to the four years. Okay. What I can speak to is what's being now done now. So. Yeah. And, 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 and just to kind of add to that, um, when you keep on talking about the survey that we did, which was led by a diverse, um, um, uh, you know, organization, which was a seventh generation collective with, you know, BIPOC women led and, you know, a lot of diversity. We had people there that were a variety of different ages. And then Donahue Institute, which I don't think they have the same kind of diversity breakdown as that organization did, then, you know, it, it, it concerns me. So again, I want to see is whether this is going to happen quickly so that we can get to the to the to the point of actually establishing this youth empowerment that needs to obviously focus, even though it's going to be for all youth, but has a, have a focus on BIPOC youth and also have a BIPOC youth in the leadership of the Youth Empowerment Center. I want to see if that's going to happen. And so for me, thank you for more clarity in terms of what is happening with this, because I am, you know, Allegra and I are going to discuss this because we are going to go to the town manager to get some some answers in terms of this, because right now it's in another purview. That means we we don't have the access to it in terms of CSSJC. And so it's concerning to me in terms of how um, things are proceeding. Um, I see Philip has his hand. I want to do a time check. It's about 7.06. So I do want to leave some time for Cress. Um, mm -hmm. And I did just what I kind of echo what Deborah said in terms of the hard work and participatory action research um, component of Dr. Shabazz's organization um, and the training that they had their, you know, their tiers of outreach that they did. Um, I do think that there was a lot of getting out into the community. And um, so I just, I want to make sure that we honor her legacy um, when we speak of the work that went into supporting the 7 Gen and the CSWG. Um, Philip. Yeah, for sure. I just wanted to um, add in and just say that the group's focus is for sure um, very much in line with CSWG's work. Um, the blueprint is there for the group. I mean, I was just sent over stuff um, and pertains to kind of what the overall mission is and CSWG's report was in there. ARPA's report was in there, or not ARPA, I'm sorry. Um, the reparations report was in there as well as um, something from REC. So the group that is meeting has the focus and the Donahue Institute um, said it very loud and clear during the meeting and it was very well received by all parties involved. Um, as far as rec and finance that this um, focus is on BIPOC individuals and BIPOC focus and seeing that the work is really meant to be what CSWG kind of put forward. It is just, I mean, it is what it is, right? It's four years later. And so we're trying to move forward, but not trying to drag it out. I know that um, on the like details of the plan, it is very much that there are deadlines to be met. And even with um this week, you know, Paul could have easily moved back a meeting because he wasn't available because he's out on vacation. But we had that meeting and they met with us kind of without a signed contract for that one meeting while Paul's out and away. So the effort is to for sure move this forward as feasible and quickly as possible. Okay, well, well, I I want to I want to hear more um, next time in terms of who's the lead for this and two um, timetables is what I I, I want to know because again you know there's been unfortunately a lot of delay tactics that have has happened over the years as as we know um, and you know want to hear more about that and and speaking of that and I know we want to talk about Crest but just quickly a resident oversight board because that's one that you know. So again, as I said in the email to you um, earlier this afternoon, that I'm very limited in what I can say about the Resident Oversight Board because the contracting process is still ongoing with the Finance Department. What I can say is that the town is working through uh, contract issues with a preferred provider and that they anticipate 
that a contract would be signed before the end of the month of August with a timetable uh, or timeline. Beyond that, I'm not um, able to, to, to state anything. So you're saying, so a contractor will probably, you'll, you'll end up having a provider hopefully by the end of the month and then there will be a timetable. So for the next next uh, month's meeting, we should get a timetable as to when Rob will be um, established. Right. I think that the, the, the uh, timeline or timetable will be included in the final contract. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pamela. Um, so Camille, can we turn to Cress? Sure. Um, I just want to let you know, in comparison, June, um, Cress took care of 76 calls uh, with department collaboration of 31 times businesses six times and social service agencies 11 times with 160 recorded interactions with neighbors. July was 94 calls with 52 to town departments with 226 interactions with neighbors and 6% were mental health calls. This was uh, um, from the 160 interactions, which is a 40% increase. There have been a total of 1,020 interactions this year so far, and responders distributed 207 resources during the month. I also wanted to let you know that we are actively recruiting and going through the process of um, looking over applications for the vacant responder positions. And lastly, that Saturday is Community Safety Day from 10 to two at Mill River, which will have all the safety departments and the town departments represented. So um, Cress will be there to kind of like answer questions and interact with the community? Yes. Okay. So we're really looking forward to it. Great, that sounds good. DEI yeah, is gonna be there too, I'm, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> be there, awesome. Um, so well, question. Um, how many um, responders are there right now? Currently, we have four. Okay, so so that was a change from how many did you all have before then? Before, uh, we had originally eight. Okay, so then that means that four have left uh, within these past you know few months. So do you know what 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 has happened there? Yes, uh, two of them went on to other um, endeavors. One went to another um, town agency and one went to, and I would call it, she was stolen to uh, 80 acres. Okay. So I guess for me though, that kind of, you know, I guess I have some questions about that, that so many have left and, and these, you know, what, past month or past two months? Isn't that like kind of problematic? No, not at all. Every time there is a new leadership change, change takes time. So this is what has happened. Hmm. There are changes all throughout. Okay. So um, with four left, um, how much is Crest actually being able to do? During As I stated, we're still up there in the call volume and it has increased. We're still working on getting our call volumes up and dealing with um, the neighbors and, you know, nothing really has changed. So uh, we're still out there active and participating. And as I said, everything has gone up. Whereas before, before I came, um, actually during the interim team, the call volume had started going up and has increased significantly since I've been there. So we are actually out doing the work that was or uh, that we were originally charged with. Okay. So I think uh, Camille, like we had talked about before, and which you you did do, I think once or maybe possibly twice. I mean, what would be helpful would be if you can continue to kind of send us those reports, um, because for you it would be important to get the reports because we want to see the numbers. Um, if you could get it to us before, and that could be included as part of the agenda, um, you know, so that we can review, you know, beforehand, and so that. Also, the community can see these calls and, and things like that. Um, and so, you know, and I think you did it maybe once or twice. I mean, because again, you know, just kind of saying them quickly, like I was trying to take notes, but I couldn't even get all those numbers and stuff like that. So it's, it, it, 
it wasn't very helpful to me. So I can't really compare it to anything. Um, so just to let you know some of the things that, excuse me. So one of the things is also is that we are working on our community page and our social media. And now that we have a social media director for the town, that is some of the things that we've been uh, wanting to highlight are some of the calls and the types of things that we are doing in the community so that people know where and when they can see us. And like I said, we are much more visible in the community. So that is a really good thing. And people have been coming to us um, and working with other agencies. I mean, this is, it's a process. So um, I'm happy. Everything doesn't happen overnight. I wish it did. Um, but as you well know, it takes time to to change, to make a change. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Um, but do you think that like, you know, what we had discussed before that we could get those reports like before the meeting so that we can review it and then we can discuss when we do have the meeting? That's not a problem. Okay, great. So um, I get a monthly report. Um, it's usually sometimes like it only came in uh, late, early this week. So um, I'm going to try and see if we can get it to you at least Monday before the Wednesday meeting. Would that be fine? Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Um. And then um, I guess like the, the the question, because like I said, I think before you had included it. So in terms of dispatch, do we know if, if anything has been dispatched to you? So uh, yes, we have had a couple of dispatches, but as I stated and reported before, um, the same thing for like different boards is that everything has to go through clarification through the union and everything else. So that is what we're waiting on now. Our end is set, okay? Mm -hmm. We're all set with our standard operating procedures and how we will proceed. What we're waiting on is to get clarification from um, the union and to have a sit down again as you know, people are on vacation and the key people, one or the other is out. So um, hopefully, you know, by the end of the month, we'll be able to get together and really get this hashed out and get it done. Well, if you need any support from us, please count on us, because obviously, as you know, that was something that we've all always been pushing for is to have that, like you said, you know, you all being able to outreach on your own independently, having your own number so that people can connect to you, but also having that opportunity because a lot of people know 911, right? So a lot of times when people are in crisis, they're going to go automatically and contact 911. So when they contact 911, right, that you all have those standard operating procedures in place so that they know which calls need to go to CRESS. So that's something that we're very much, you know, wanting to happen here at CSS. You see, that's always been a goal. So if you need us to also advocate on your behalf to make sure that that happens, because we do understand that it's a process. We do understand that the union sometimes, you know, you know, are not, you know, they don't understand fully, like, because it's a new department, how it's supposed to happen. So if you need us to be more supportive of that and make sure that to, to assist, we're more than happy to assist with that. Well, thank you. Well, one of the things, having been a firefighter, I know how uh, the process works. And one of the things is the other part of this is training. So to get, as there is a new uh, supervisor there who is very much on board, okay, and we were getting the reports and trying to get them. Um, one of the problems is, is that because there's HIPAA, HIPAA information and everything else, they're not able to share with us the full reports. So we have to rely on the redacted reports to figure out what actually is a Crest call. So part of this is a lot of training for not only the responders, but also the training that's going to have to happen with the new dispatchers. And the new supervisor is very um, excited and he is ready to work with us on, you know, working with the training and also to have the responders go to dispatch so they can understand exactly what goes into it. Good. Um, and then uh, my last one, and I know like you, you want to jump in on this, but um, my last question is just in terms of, I know you said that there's been a variety of different calls, you know, like with neighbors and things like that. Again, you know, because I don't know like the types of calls and, and things like that, I just want to make sure and, and kind of, you know, put in again, my pitch to make sure that we are getting calls that are, you know, 
going that need to go to CRESS, which is calls that are focused on safety, alternative to policing and things like that. That's so so that you all are seen as that, you know, and not as a catch all. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously, you know, you all have a lot of very important things to deal with. And so I want to make sure that you're dealing with those critical matters and not dealing with other things that other uh, departments and services in the town should be dealing with. Well, I think that's the beauty of us is that um, since I've come along and the relationship that I have with the other town departments has really made things a lot easier. So we actually had a call where a neighbor went to the police department to talk to someone about an issue they were having with their neighbor. And the death sergeant, instead of sending one of his people, called over to Crest. So this is why I'm saying things take time, but things are already changing. And when the people that are out there in the community, uh, the patrol officers, the sergeants, lieutenants, et cetera, are sitting there saying, no, send Crest you know, calling us up directly or having us radio, you know, radio and dispatch to send us. So it is happening. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. I just had one question um, and it was just about kind of the diversity of the remaining team members because I know that was a big part of the vision for Crest was to make sure that there were kind of multiracial teams that were able to be dispatched and just wondering if you can speak on that at all. Well, we still have the diversity, oh, very much so. Um, and the candidate pool that we're looking at is diverse. So um, I'm actually looking forward to some of the um, the resumes I've looked at are really exciting. And I'm ready and excited to to get the ball rolling so we just wanted to make sure that we had a good pool of candidates that were a good fit who were willing to be active in the community and could see this uh program from an anti-racist social justice standpoint um using motivational interviewing and you know understanding the needs of the community thank you Oh, one one last kind of quick question. So because, you know, Cress is down to four responders, are you, what's the schedule? Is the schedule still the same that you all have had? Because, you know, obviously, I know at this point, because we've always been asking for, you know, additional hours, at least shifting the hours to when it would be more. But like, what's the hours still with Cress? Right now, we're Monday through Friday, eight to four and uh, Saturday. Um, for this week and then we're going to cut back down to monday through friday until we get the new um responders onboarded mm -hmm. and then at that point along with the change for dispatch you know um then we will change the hours all right so yeah if you can um keep us posted with that you know once those th that happens okay. uh this just popped into my head because people have mentioned the block party, but I know last year we tabled there. Is that something that we would want to do again? Is that something that DEI and Cress are doing and would be willing to have CSSJC members stop by? I um, missed part of the first part of your uh, question, but I uh, if I'm Interpreting it correctly, I think we tabled at the uh, block party, right? And so, um, and we had these special buttons that where the library was able to create buttons for the library. So, um, I'm I'm assuming that that would still be an opportunity uh, on the block party day for you all to share a table. I'll have to check with uh, Angela around space, but we'll make space. Um, I think the plan, or actually. The plan for this Saturday coming up is that Press and DI are sharing a table, but we can, I think, request an individual table for the block party, and you're more than welcome to join um, Philip and I at that table. Yeah. That's September 19th. I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you for some reason. Sorry, sometimes I cut out. Is that September 19th, the block party? I 
yeah. believe so. I don't have the date right in front of me. Because um, I think our next meeting would be the 11th. So we can yeah. remind people then. All okay. right. That's that, sorry. that was a tangent, but. No, that would be great. Good thing you rem remember that a little because last year we actually ended up interacting with a lot of people. Yeah. So to do that again, um, that would be excellent to to table along with you all at, at the block party. Okay. Yep. Um anything else about Cress at this point? Um, so I think we can move on to our second public comment period. Um, Brownie, you're muted. Oh, can you all hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Okay. I am not driving now, so I am safe. Um, I just wanted to tune in and say that I, as an audience member and a community member, am picking up on this weird hostility between town staff and the CSSJC. And I just want to point out that members on the CSSJC not only created these departments, but have gone to bat to, to advocate for the highest salaries for everyone's role, for teams to be supported and well. And I just feel like there's a lot of friction right now and these critical questions that Deborah is asking are questions that the community is also wondering and they're questions that are coming from a place of us wanting to better serve the community. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. Hello, this is Martha Hanner. Uh, greetings to everyone. Hi, Martha. I live, I live in South Amherst, as uh, I think you know, and I'm just speaking as an individual here. I uh, try as best I can to attend your meetings, and I would just like to give my perspective on the flow of information. For members of the community like me, the monthly CSSJC meeting is my only opportunity to learn what's going on with, with CRAS, with DEI, uh, and, and related things in the community. So this is uh, just really kind of a, a, a plea to our uh, DEI and, and CRAS uh, staff uh, that uh, it's not just CSSJC members that are interested in hearing from you, but it's it's people like me in the community that are interested in uh, listening mon monthly and learning what's going on. Uh, and so also then, Camille, your, there was a little discussion of your providing a, a, a summary re report to the members, if that's something that can go in the packet so that then members of the public would also have a chance to uh, view it. Uh, at some point, that would be appreciated too. Yes. As you know, I'm associated with the uh, League of Women Voters Racial Justice Committee. I'm speaking now just as an individual, but I certainly do go back and report whatever I've learned from this meeting you know, to that group as well, so that uh, we do appreciate anything that we can learn uh, at your meetings about what's going on. I mean, I think. Uh, throughout our town government, um, transparency does seem to be a challenge. I mean, you know, you are all busy, you're doing a lot of good things, and it's often very hard for the public to learn what's going on. And I think the example tonight was the confusion about the uh, youth empowerment uh, center or whatever, you know, it was a little hard to figure out, you know, if the right hand knew what the left hand was was doing because people were working on it, but it wasn't really yet organized to the point of being able to, uh, to you know, give out information. So um, I just encourage you all and uh, say that there are a lot of us out here who are interested in all the good things that you're doing. And uh, also please, Keep up the good work, all of you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Martha.
I assume that I'm being uh, able to speak to this group. No one has called on me. Yes. My name, is Kathleen you know. My name is Kathleen Anderson. I live in South Amherst. I'm a former school committee member, the past president of the Amherst NAACP. And I just wanted to uh, announce to people that this Saturday, August 17th, the um, um, Race Amity group of the Baha'i community is gathering at, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, is gathering at um, Kendrick Park from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, so this is a good place for the various groups of people included in uh, issue and uh, interested in racial justice to attend, show up, put your face where your mouth is. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Walker. Um, I am town councilor at large, but here speaking on behalf of myself as an individual. Um, I first just wanted to take a minute again to thank you all for engaging in this critically important work for our town. Um, I also wanted to welcome Philip. We are really excited to have you back in town um, and excited to um, see all the work that you're going to do. Um, I just wanted to make a few comments, um, mostly echoing what Brianna said, um, and then just to emphasize again how critically important this work is, and to just highlight that all of us in this work, on this committee meeting, in the audience, in the community, like we are a team, and we need to be working together. Um, and so I just hope that we can keep that in mind, that while we might not always agree on the process or the steps we should take, like we have the same goal. And so we really should be working together. Um, <clears throat> I also agree uh, with Martha Hanner in terms of transparency. Like this is a very important meeting. It is a very important opportunity for community members, even myself as a town counselor to get updates as to what's going on um, with the diversity initiatives in town. There is no other platform where you can access all of this information easily at one time. Um, and so, I would also encourage you all to, to think about that and to think about looking at processes to better streamline that, streamline that for the future, um, whether that be including information in the packet or putting things online, um, because it is really hard to keep up with some of the changes that are happening. And again, circling back to the Youth Empowerment Center, I know that at one point, it was with the rec center and I had met with Ray and then the town manager moved it out of the rec center. And so I'm surprised to hear that it's now back with the rec center. Um, and so, you know, those things are really hard to keep up with. And these meetings, again, are some of the only times where we get updates as to what is happening in that process. And it's really important. Um, and then I also just really want wanted to quickly touch on the work of the CSWG and talk about like the longevity and the progress that is possible within the social justice work happening in this town. And I think it's a, it's an, a unique challenge because of the turnover and because of the, the amount of time it takes to get projects off the ground. Um, and I know that you all are mindful of that, but just thinking about how important it is to be building off of previous work to avoid sort of this cyclical, <clears throat> motion that we're we're going in right now. Um, and uh, again, speaking to the work of the CSWG, which I was <clears throat> co-chair with Brianna, um, the research that happened as a part of the CSWG was very, very intentional. Um, and it went far beyond just making sure people who look like us are out in the community collecting the data. Um, it went as far as to make sure that the people who were in the community collecting the data were trusted community members, well-known and well-connected within the community who could get information from our most vulnerable and marginalized residents who lack trust with town government. And I think that that's really incredibly important to highlight is that 
some of the information in the data that was collected in that research is not something that can be duplicated by just walking around downtown. It was very much more strategic and intentional than that. And so I really encourage you to add to that data rather than sort of redoing it. I think that data needs to be maintained, needs to continue to serve um, as you know, initiative for what we're moving forward because we need that information. I know it was four years ago, but a lot of that is really still relevant. And a lot of those youth are still in this town and still want to see those exact same services. And so we don't necessarily need to redo all of that outreach. And again, just really reflecting on the significance and the impact that Demetria Shabazz had on this town um, and wanting to make sure that we keep that energy alive and that we are using that data. I, I really, again, just please continue to use the CSWG da data. It is It was very intentional. It was curated very specifically. And I would love to see town leaders talk about it in a, just talk about it more highly. It, it feels like it's being doubted. Um, so I just wanted to bring all of those things to your attention. And again, thank you all so much for this work. I look forward <clears throat> to hearing the updates on the Resident Oversight Board um, and to following your work. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Hi, Allegra and Deborah and Pamela and Philip. This is Liz, by the way. And for those of you who are out in the audience, this is Liz Haygood and I'm in District 2. And um, I am currently co-chair of the Human Rights Commission. Um, I need to speak to you all about some changes. And um, for those of you who already know, this is my second term as uh, a member of the Human Rights Commission and my first term as co-chair. And because of my second career that it takes me out of the town of Amherst and across the country, um, I have decided to step down from the Human Rights Commission. However, I did say that I would stay on at least through October when we was to present our last year's um, report to the town council. And when I spoke to some folks, um, Pamela, Philip, and Paul, they asked me to think about staying on and because according to at least one of them, 10% of me is better than 90% of somebody else because I am have a pulse on young people in the town and what goes on. So I, I weigh that heavily in my heart because I don't want to leave such a critical position but I also know that I'm not going to be at full capacity. So I'm weighing that as, and I'm struggling with that. And I'm definitely struggling with that when, I, when I'm going to say the next phrase, which is I am very concerned that um, there's three openings for the CSSJC, four openings in Crest, and at least three openings in the Human Rights Commission. And for the few of us to be doing this critical work, lends to burnout. And I'm trying not to have that for myself because that's part of what I'm feeling, especially when I can't be in full force like I would like to be. But I'm going to hang in there for as much as and as long as I can, um, knowing that I'm not going to make every meeting and I'm not going to be able to join in on some of the CSSJC meetings and go to some of the um, affordable housing uh, meetings that I've been trying to go to, um, especially since we're, I'm very aware, concerned, and and I hope enthused about us um, creating our um, Youth Empowerment Center. So um, for those of you that are out there, that's what I, who I am, what I'm about right now. And again, I'm very concerned about the vacancies and I say that with one foot out the door, but I also say that with um, hope that those of you who are out there that are not involved in any part of our town's um, 
very important um, uh, fractions, if you will, that you consider being involved and help us out and make sure that each and every one of our community members, especially those that look like me, stay safe while they're navigating the town of Amherst. Thank you very much. It's good to see you guys. And um, I'm glad that I was able to listen in today. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Ms. Pat, your hand is up. I'm not sure if it's still up, so I will bring you in. Um, it's me again. I'm so triggered in listening to tonight's meeting. I say that because of the youth center controversy. Dr. Shabazz, I mean, Dr. Shabazz, may her so rest in peace. She had PhD. There were three women that did the study, the seven gen, led by Dr. D. Shabazz. We have Dr. Katie and also Dr. Sanji. They did a thorough job. Under very difficult circumstance, they produced excellent report. And basically what we're seeing in our town government is to disrespect black women in our town. Dr. Dishabaz Sanji, who spent time to put a report together. What I see that is happening with the youth center is chaos. It's chaos from rec department shifting around, now finance department, and it's no longer with DEI. I do want to remind CSSJC that when CSWG recommended a youth center, it was is we were very, very clear and it was accepted by the Tech Council that Youth Center will be under DEI. And the youth have to be in leadership uh, situation. Just to throw away money to Donahoe Institute to, to do what? Give more money to, to white-led entity. That are, we don't need that. What is needed is to go back to a seven gen report and do the implementation. There's too much chaos in our town. I also want to speak on uh, to high turnover in Crest. It's, I am an employer. If people feel safe, and if you, people feel that they're not going to be retaliated against, they will stay on. I hope this sends the message to the decision makers. Why is it that departments that are supposed to support marginalized residents and groups in our town is still, after two years, still struggling? Why is, it, why is that racism? And in terms of committee, HRC, and you know, Ms. Lee spoke so eloquently that our openings there, People are feeling burnt out with CSSJC. I was one of the inaugural member of CSSJC. I had to remove myself because I just felt that it was just, we're just, you know, going into circles, circles. Nothing is happening. Disrespecting members. Nothing was happening and it, it continues. It needs to stop. This, this needs to stop. It's not okay at all. I also want to, um, so in terms of um, youth center, I do want to remind folks, including people listening, that youth center is not only just about rec uh, 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 recreational. There is a huge major, major component that is missing that people are not discussing, and that is promoting cultures of our youth. So that's why we pushed it to DEI. I just want to remind people again. I want also to echo what um, 
Councillor Walker had said, what Brianna said, what Liz said, and I want to apologize to Deborah. You know, you may be feeling alone because I did not like, you know, what went down tonight. All you're doing, you're speaking for us. You're speaking for our community. You're representing us. And I'm not seeing you being respected. Bunch of, you know, black women should not be working like this. It's not division of CSS, uh, CSWG. We can do better. You all are very, very smart. We need unity and we need transparency. We should stop dismissing folks who work hard to put these two departments together. It was actually Dr. D when I had a private discussion with her that we came up with the two departments. And I said, I'll just you know throw it out and see what my group will say, CSWG. And that's why some of you were able to get this job. And we, we want to continue to fight for the vision of why we created DEI and Chris. And it's not happening. We're losing staff. We're losing good staff. And our town pays well. It's not about the payment. When you treat, when you make staff feel welcome, they will stay because I'm an employer. I know that. I know that we can't continue, you know, where do we go from here? Every month, we have our staff like being defensive. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just very, very frustrated. I'm very frustrated. That's all I can say. Thank, Thank you. you. Alicia, I see your hand is still up. Uh, I can bring you back in. Oh, all right, hand down. Um, Greetings, my name is Evelyn Aquino, and I'm a town resident. And not to go too deep into it, I second everything that everyone has called. I depend on this call and this meeting to learn about what's happening within um, our city government with the hard work that CSWG has been working on. Um, it is very triggering, it is very frustrating. It is very hard to understand what the animosity and the vibe that our town staff has toward this committee. This is our community. We live here, we work here, our children are in this community, our families are in this community. It's not a job. We look to create a thriving community that serves all. So it's very hard to understand what the chip is and what the vibe of ne negativity is when people have worked to heal relationships, to build alliances, to strengthen relationships. It is very confusing, very confusing. And Philip, glad you're back. Good to see you. Look forward to the great work you'll do here. Um, I had similar questions. I don't wanna continue on with the same questions, but the youth empowerment um, situation is very confusing. Um, those that have been in politics for a long time understand Stand this as a tactic of, of um, delay to not create um, productivity around the efforts of a community um, putting forth suggestions. This is not unusual. This is a very old play in the playbook. Um, we will continue to push and raise our voices um, to see if we can get what we need and what we've asked for and what we've researched with quality research um, to know that this community deserves uh, representation, education. I'm concerned about who is in this new task force without any transparency. There are members in our community that do not serve our children in the margins, in the shadows with the utmost respect. So I would love to see who's on the committee that's really here for the young people and for what the young people need. I second what Alicia said around the data that was found in that report. 
We are talking about young people in our community. They did not die after four years. These are needs that have been here for a very long time and they continue to be here. Those, stat those stats and that data is not old, <laughs> same story. So for Donahue Institute to be hired is very confusing because it completely counters the equity um, approach that we hired seven generations for. Um, it's just very disappointing that all this effort with a, a robust group of CSWG um, leadership that worked so hard and it was so exciting as a community member to see it, all the work that was coming out of it has been little by little being unraveled. I'm concerned about the staff we're losing. It sounded like we started Crest Strong and we're losing people. I'm curious about the restorative justice that is being promoted at our in our town offices as part of the work that is not sustaining the staff. How are we doing restorative justice if relationships are being broken? If we're talking about staff going somewhere else as stolen? Like, I don't understand what this language and this whole vibe is in our, in our community, really, it's hurtful in our community. This is where we live. This is where we look to thrive. Again, it's not a job. Many of us do this as part of our livelihood, but we also do it because we want to live in a just and equitable community. I have concerns of the block party being the only one of the places of getting young people's responses. School is getting started and the block party is a party. Young people are not gonna be in the mind space for what you're asking when we're talking about the needs and representation of what that empowerment center was looking to serve. I'm really concerned about that approach. And yeah, that I just second all, all the folks who've spoken that we need transparency. We need to work as a community. The negativity that has been invited in is very concerning and very, very disheartening. And Philip, we will back you up and hopefully that will not be, that would not infect you or impact you. You have been a strong member in this community. You worked hard on that committee to bring forth all the findings that we have been working so hard for years, still on block one for so many of those recommendations. Thank you for your hard work, all of you for showing up today, for staying on, for making this happen. And I really do have faith and I look forward to continuing to learn more details and continue to work in partnership wholeheartedly with respect for what our community is and what we can be. And I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. Seeing any more hands. So looking at the time, it's 7.53. Um, I believe our next meeting will be September 11th at 6.30. We will be addressing the leftover agenda items from today, which was kind of, I think, more or less a strategic planning for the committee, kind of look at the next year and what our goals might be and how we might achieve them and who we might partner with. Um, so unless there's anything we didn't reasonably anticipate within 48 hours that you would like to discuss, Deborah, I think we can end the meeting. Well, I, I just have one announcement that I ended up seeing that I forgot to say. This is um, um, Jennifer Moisson actually that shared it with me. There's gonna be a Black Roots Festival um, uh, on um, September 8th, which is a Sunday um, hosted by 80 Acres. They're going to be celebrating, um, you know, just uh, African American culture with food, music, art. Um, so you know, more details to come. But just wanted folks to kind of um, save the date on that, and it'll be obviously. Oh no, it's going to be in the Amherst Town Common actually. So that's on the eighth. Um, and then the thing that we do need to kind of maybe we'll have to do it offline as a committee. Um, you know, even though, of course, I know that we can't kind of respond all, but just to kind of get some 
some thought is just around the uh, town forms because that we had put some holes on for like I think the 19th and and another date um so we'll just have to kind of give it a little bit more thought on that thank you for that reminder all right so I think we can end the meeting at 7 55 thank you all welcome again Phil oh. bye thank you all <laughs>